the Wellness Hour. An in-depth discussion with today's top physicians and medical leaders. And now, your host, Randy Alvarez. You are watching The Wellness Hour, leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, hot topic, mommy makeovers. With us, we have San Francisco's hottest plastic surgeons, Dr. Poulos and Dr. Vistendahl. Welcome to the program. Randy, it's great to be here. Great to be here. Now, before we get into today's topic, I guess you're the founder, so I'll start with you. Tell me a little bit about your practice. Uh, we're located just outside of San Francisco, about 10 minutes north of the Golden Gate Bridge. And uh, we specialize in all aspects of aesthetic plastic surgery. Now, you're both board-certified plastic surgeons. That's, That's correct. Right. Is that right? So who is right. your typical patient? Uh, do you do everything? Well, we basically specialize in aesthetic plastic surgery. Okay. You know, that encompasses facial rejuvenation surgery, which includes the brows, the eyes, uh, nasal changes, rhinoplasty, facelifts, of course. Uh, breast surgery, br uh, breast enhancement of all, uh, all categories, uh, tummy tucks, liposuction, which kind of leads us to what's become our major specialty, which is mommy makeover. Mommy makeover. Now, you two are known as the mommy makeover surgeons, the busiest guys in San Francisco. So, I, I, and I'll ask you, how did you, uh, why mommy makeovers? Well, it's sort of a unique um, procedure to do because what you're trying to create for everybody is to make them really feel good about themselves and their bodies. So, you both have the same techniques or philosophy when it comes to breast and tummy tuck and lipo. Yeah, I think is that's that true. In order to be a mommy makeover surgeon, you first have to be an expert in those procedures that make it up. Okay. Correct? So, Absolutely. we're talking about breast enhancement surgery, whether it's breast augmentation, breast reduction, breast lift. We're talking about tummy tuck, whether it's a partial, a mini, a circumferential and we're talking about liposuction and then combining those things in a way that's going to give that particular individual the very best result. What are the age ranges that you see? Well, we see women in their mid-twenties, perhaps that have uh, finished their families early and are ready to, to get back into their bikini. We see women in their fifties who've long since finished their family but have never really had the time because of work or other constraints to be able to do something for themselves. So it's really a wide range of patients, but they share one thing in common. They want to feel better about themselves better about their body. Did you come up with this, this mommy makeover concept, the name? I think the term has been floating out there, but it hasn't become a household name quite yet. But we see it more and more in the media. And it's just a, catch, a catchy term that sort of encompasses what we do. And Is it becoming the most popular procedure? I think it's spreading like wildfire through the internet. Obviously, we have so much information today. And ultimately, what people want is they want a good result. And they also want to do it relatively easy. They want to have one recovery if they can. Why split it up and have two recoveries, two payments, all that kind of stuff when they can just do it in one setting? So they want a safe procedure. They want a relatively quick procedure. And ultimately, they want a beautiful result. And that's what they can get with Mommy Makeover. And that's why it's becoming so popular. All right. Now, your background in training. Uh, we'll start with you. Tell me a little bit about... Uh... Well, board certified plastic surgeon. You know, I trained at the University of Texas in medical school and the University of California in surgery training. Um, been in practice for over 25 years in Northern California. And uh, as mommy makeover kind of evolved as a procedure in my practice, you know, individualizing the techniques that are involved in the surgery, I came to see that to do this well and to do it in the time constraints that we needed to do it and to get the best quality results, I really needed a partner. Okay. Needed someone that we could work together that could Absolutely. make this procedure safe and effective and by virtue of the time savings also financially affordable for people to go in and have a total body sculpting if you will. What about your background training? Well I started out uh, at Dartmouth College on the East Coast, moved uh, sort of westward into uh, Case Western Reserve in Cleveland and from there I moved uh, out to University of California, basically the same school that um, Stan went to and did my general surgery and then on to my uh, Plastics Fellowship there, and then established my own pri private practice and was in private practice for about uh, seven, eight years until uh, Stan and I sort of... You guys just clicked right off the bat. Well, we clicked yeah. even before that. Oh, really? Enough, when I actually got out of residency, we spoke, but it just didn't fit at the time. He'd just right. taken on an associate, right. and, you know, things just didn't quite click, but we were always talking about it. It was always there in the background, and finally we got the chance, and... We so just it's all for better run, results. Run with it. Absolutely. And did you both always know you want to be a plastic surgeon? You know? I, you know, I think in, in surgery, most of the time you decide if you're going to be an internist or a surgeon, right? Okay. And once you get into surgery, you say, where's my special niche in surgery? And both of us kind of arrived at the same place at plastic surgery because it was such a creative field, if you will. And I think mommy makeover is probably the height of that because it allows you to take all the training that you've had, 
whether it's facial surgery, breast surgery, body contour surgery, liposuction, put all that into one patient and be able to create a result that's life-changing. So is this patient. truly a makeover? I mean, when you, when you hear about oh, this. Absolutely, this is a... and that's why we call it a mommy makeover. It's not body after baby. You could call it that. That's a little cliche term, right. too. But it really, truly is a makeover. It changes a person's life. You say life they change so their lives. Ways. How so? I mean, really? It doesn't just change their body. It changes their entire attitude. And you'll see on some of the photos we're like going to show so? you. I mean, specifically there. Well, it's just that it's a confidence level that they have. I mean, and we've all been there. We've gone to cocktail parties in the summertime, and some women are more dressed and sort of hidden, and they've got that little slump, and they're not feeling comfortable about themselves, and they're sort of hiding behind the drink. And then you've got some other women who are out there, and they're flashing their midriff, and, you know, they're really showing it off. And you can see the difference so they get their body in their personality. You I mean, change it like that? Absolutely. They get the body back, and maybe a little bit more. Maybe they get a little bit more breast enhancement because they like what they had before but they want a little bit extra okay. you know they had a nice flat stomach but now they're a little bit flatter and a little bit tighter and had a little bit more definition they love that and once they've had it done now they're motivated now they're going to the gym now they love what they're seeing so defining it for me a, a little bit of lipo tummy tuck if, if necessary breast enhancement in some way lift or augmentation well you customize it for each individual person I mean, right. and that's so, what's so important about what we do in our consultation is that we look at each individual person and we ask them questions about what bothers you and, you know, the regular questions that every plastic surgeon would ask him. But ultimately, we're going to put it all together and say, okay, well, we can do this with your breast and we're going to do this with your stomach. And when we show them that in the mirror, they go, oh, my God, look at this. This is fantastic. This is great. So over the years, uh, you know, you've done a lot of surgery. Is this the happiest group of patients, people that go through this, yeah. this transformation? I think absolutely, Randy. It, it really is because it makes a change in their life and a change in their lifestyle. It allows the lady who thought she was never going to wear a two-piece bathing suit again to get back to the beach. It allows the person who never wore a low-cut cocktail dress to be able to pick out that cute little black dress that okay. she always wanted. Those are things that are very specific. It's how you feel about On the yourself. consults, I mean, do they tell you their, their motives? They say, hey, you know, I, I want to go to a reunion. I'm getting married. I mean, what do they tell you? Well, sometimes they do. I mean, some, some people have a birthday coming up, whether it's 35, 40, 25, you, you pick it. They have uh, reunions that they want to look better at. And now in this day and age, you know, a lot of people want to go back into the workforce. They're competing with younger people. Interesting. That's going to be important for them to look better. You, you say know. in a recession, people, people are investing in themselves. Absolutely. Expand on Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I think in a job, you know, you're, you're going to hire someone to work in your, uh, your particular line of business. You want that person to, to make a statement. You want them to... To, to act like they feel. Not well, being fit be is actually a healthy look. Right. It is a healthy look, so and it gives the you, person confidence. You always confidence. want to hire the person that looks the most energetic. I'll tell you I what, guess. if you feel confident about yourself and your person because you're looking good, you're going to go to that interview, and you're going to have that confidence, and that, that employer is going to notice that. Whereas if you're uncomfortable and you're trying to hide some, something, then Interesting. Good you're point. going to notice that difference. So having that personality change because of the appearance change become so important. Big boost in self-esteem. Big Absolutely. boost. They get it back. Okay, yeah. so you have some photos. That, uh, yeah. Start wherever you'd like. Uh, so we'll start kind of breaking it down into the categories of the surgery because some people are a candidate for one of the procedures, some are a candidate for all together, which we'll get into in a minute. But here's a lady that has the most typical thing that we see in the breasts after childbearing, and that's what we call the deflation effect. Simply have had, you know, expansion of the breasts with the milk coming in, the deflation of the breasts after the pregnancy, changes that occur from nursing, we just lose the volume. So could they work out to, to bring that back? I mean, no matter what, is it just going to get worse? Once that volume is gone, it's gone. All right. The shape of the breast is not going to change. That's going to affect the, not only the bra size, but the type of clothing that that person can wear. And she says, you know, I've been my whole life, prior to children, a B cup, a C cup, whatever her size was, and suddenly she feels like she's not herself anymore. So this is an interesting thing about mommy makeover is that our patients are coming in not so much to change something completely about themselves, okay. but to be back to where they were. Right? Wow. So it's almost a form of reconstructive surgery at the same time. And so, so many times, if I can interject, is that they come in and what they're saying is that I've been working out so hard, I'm doing all the right things, I'm eating well, and I'm doing those things, and nothing seems to help. This is still attached. My breast is still sort of hanging, and they're just not the, they don't have the perkiness they once used to have, and I'm actually not feeling that sexy about my body anymore. Even though I'm really fit, I probably haven't been as fit in my life as I am today. Right. And then Interesting. it ultimately comes down to 
what we can help them with because they've done everything. And now on the after of this same patient, okay. we'll see that this patient now has the breast size that she had prior to her pregnancy. In fact, she's told me she was even wearing some of her old clothes from eight years ago that she still had. All right. So that's a great beneficial effect. So the next case we're going to show is a common thing that we see after nursing. Uh, where one breast may be a different size wow, or different is that shape common? than the other. It's a very common thing because many of the ladies will come and tell you, you know, my baby's only nurse on my right breast, and suddenly the right breast is much lower, much larger, much different than the other side. So not only have they lost shape, but they've lost symmetry because most of us are used to looking at our body in a certain way. Is that a tricky one to fix? In some cases it is, definitely. Okay. But here's an after picture of this same patient. Perfectly lined up, looks good. Not only greater size, it's not just a larger breast, but it's, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a more symmetrical breast, it's more attractive, and it doesn't look like an older person. So she gets that feeling again that she's youthful. You know, All right. She may only be 10 years older than she was at that time. She shouldn't look like she's 30 years older. Okay. okay. As a matter of fact, it brings up an interesting point that some women who are young and they come in for breast augmentation, they always ask about the issue about breastfeeding after they've had Can the breast augmentation. Breastfeed? Absolutely. There's no okay. interruption when it comes to the breast really? ductules and anything when you have it. Because ultimately, the implant is just changing the mound that the breast is sitting on. It doesn't change the, the breast tissue itself. Okay. So here's a slightly different case. A person who has the breast volume, didn't even lose their breast volume after having children, but the breasts have become much more mature. Just sagging. Fast, right? Okay. So a sagging breast, basically. It's what we call ptosis in medicine. So these patients are a candidate for what we call breast uplift or mastopexy. Very nice. Where the breast is reshaped. And you'll notice in this picture. So the picture, incisions are, are uh, I mean, we can't show these on TV, right. but these are very small incisions. They're small I mean, You really incisions. can't see these. Yeah, these, these incisions we can't show you, but incisions go through a healing course. At first, they're going to be red, and they're going to be noticeable, and over a period of several months, that color is going to but fade told to minimal vision. You know, the, the problem with breast lifts is the ugly scars. Absolutely. What is your response to that? Well, I think, I think you're right, and that is a big concern. But I think ultimately, if you go to the right surgeon, they're going to give you the right results. And, and usually, we don't have a lot of problems with Do they complain with about incisions. it? I mean, in this particular case, yeah. this, this pa patient was absolutely ecstatic. Again, changing the type of clothing she wear, changing how she felt about herself, felt like she was 10 years younger, just because she fit differently in her clothing. And remember, that initial redness you tend to see on the pictures on the internet, that's because the pictures are relatively young. They're probably about three months old after surgery. That all fades away, and those scars really becomes a little white line. And, and usually they're Is so Is that the happy biggest hesitation, though, with breast lifting, that women yeah. are just worried about that? No, not really. No? I don't okay. find that. I mean, but they're concerned about it during the consultation, and I think it's, it's good to reassure them that that's not going to be an issue. And okay. They're so delighted about the shape and how everything looks that it really becomes a moot point down the line. All right. All right. Okay. I keep interrupting. Right. You were going to show me right. some more. Yeah. Next case, we're, we're dealing with a, a, a lady here who has the primary problem of stretching of her muscles after babies. You know, every pregnancy wow. gets some stretching of those rectus, those central abdominal muscles, and those muscles are supposed to act like a girdle. When that girdle gets overstretched, it's never going back. You know, when the husband comes in and says, Doc, can't you just go to the gym and do more sit-ups? Not when you have that degree of stretching. So that even someone such as this patient, who doesn't have a lot of extra uh, she's fairly thin, fat. but she she's just has thin, this... Uh... But she has this anterior forward protrusion of her intra-abdominal contents because her muscle girdle's not working. Right. So the primary job for us in a patient like this, as we see in this same patient from the side, oh is goodness. to reconstruct that girdle. Now it holds the muscles back where they're supposed to be. And if you think this doesn't look different in a yeah. tight-fitting uh, evening dress, it certainly does. Yeah. Right? So again, yeah. major change. So then we see the type of patient who their major problem is extra skin. This patient's very wow. uh, trade-off for so type. So is that an easy fix? For you, I mean, when you see an abdomen like that, are you on the console and you say, boy, this would be a great result? Relatively so. But Absolutely. The change to the patient is great. You know, this procedure, when done on its own, could be mm -hmm. an hour and a half case, and it's going to be a permanent change for that person. Now, she looks like a fitness look. person, by the way, in that after. Right. Absolutely. And what's so nice about that is I come in with the body underneath the skin envelope, which is getting all wrinkled, and all you have to do is tweak that, and you know you're going to get a beautiful result. We love seeing women like this coming in. And to answer your question, it's a lot more common than you think because the people who look like that, they're hiding. They're the ones so who are wearing them. the one piece. So they're, they're out not there. Just don't see they're them. Interesting. We're not seeing them. We see them because they come to us and they say, help. What can I do with this? I'm working out. I've got a great body underneath this saggy skin. 
I need your help. Okay, okay. okay. Randy, this, this case points out a very common thing. This is a lady who came to me who'd had two C-sections, and ever since her last C-section, her tummy had kind of fallen over like a fat abdomen falling over a tight belt around the right. middle of the tummy. And this is something that we see fairly commonly in ladies that have had this surgery. So this is something that you see here can be completely corrected. Nice. The muscles contoured, the skin taken away, and absolutely the But you say the this motivates abdomen. them, by the way. They, they, they get in better shape. They absolutely. eat better. Right. It's like leverage. Some, it's a great thing because sometimes we get the credit for a change that the patient makes because now they feel like going to the gym. They feel like working out. Is and they right? add that extra benefit to it. So sometimes patients come in and say, Doc, do I have to be at my perfect weight before I consider doing this surgery? Yeah, that's but, a good question. Right? It, you, mm -hmm. Obviously, you don't want to be, you know, changing in a major flux in a weight. But, you know, everybody, by the time they come to us, has a problem in getting to where they want to be. So, so they've already the tried diet and exercise. Try, they've tried the diets. They've tried the exercise. And hopefully they're still exercising because it's healthy in general. But ultimately, you want the patient, they're coming to you for help, and you say, listen, I can make you look beautiful in your current shell, and as long as you're not fluctuating in weight now, you're going to look great, and if you start working out because you're motivated, you're going to look even better afterwards. So don't think that you have to go and do all this dieting before the surgery because it's unrealistic. You've already tried it. It didn't work. Okay. Okay. Do you give them advice on a, a little bit of how to eat? A little absolutely. Bit? Oh, absolutely. Okay, do. good. Right. Good. Now we have time for a few more. We're going to take a break. Okay. Let's take a look. All right. Uh, next case shows somebody that their primary problem was excess fat deposition, right? I just never was able to get off that extra 20 pounds. So those are big love handles or, there. Or yeah. 10 pounds that came with each of three kids and couldn't get rid of it. Boy. So now this patient needed only liposuction to make a major change in the figure. So we can actually create a waistline in someone that doesn't have it, actually create a buttock contour to minimize the protrusion of the saddlebag. So that's one aspect of this operation that falls with almost every mommy makeover surgery has liposuction in some area to help with the sculpting, okay. to create the waistline, to create the curvatures. And you know, we say this all the time, and I think, you know, to put it all together, we sort of showed you the individual cases, now I'll bring it all together in a mommy makeover, and I'm gonna show you some pictures here. Um, this lady came to me, she was 27 years old, had started her family very early on, and, and actually felt very, very nice uh, prior to having children. This is a young person. Young person. Is that right? 27 years old, but What's her tummy looks like... What's going on with the stomach right well, there? Well, the stomach is exactly why she came in, uh, because it's all wrinkly. She's got skin, which is excess. She has a little bit of fat deposition. She's lost a little bit of a contour from the underlying abdominal wall. And also, she's got deflation of her breasts. You can see here she's lost some of the upper parenchyma. She doesn't have the fullness that she had before. So she came in and said, listen, I would just love to look young and perkier, I feel great, my kids are great, I'm sort of out of the woods, I'm not having any more children, okay. I just want to feel sexy again, Dr. Vistendahl, that's basically what she said to me, and I said, so we can do? do that. So basically we said, well, let's do a breast enhancement, I mean, what are you thinking? She said, well, I don't want to be too big, so let's make you natural, but we want you to be perky, you're young, you, you belong in perky breasts, so to speak. Okay. And then, we also need to flatten up that stomach, and I would love to see you in a bikini, and she said, I'm not going to wear a bikini, and I said, <laughs> yes, you will, after this procedure. And as you can see, you know, even the side view, you can see she has a little pooch on the lower abdomen here, yeah. you know, and, but ultimately, the package is still good, but it's just not showing very well. So after surgery, now you wow. can see that she's got a beautiful result in her breasts, very natural, they're perky, and just the way that she wanted, and her abdomen is nice and flat. And here's one of the things in our, our pet peeves in our surgery. You want to make that incision low. But you also have to ask them. The tummy you, tuck? The tummy we're tuck. We're talking about? Keep those incisions low. She because likes to go if low. you're going to okay. wear a bikini, those bikini bottoms are now very, very low. If you're going to wear low ride jeans, you've got to have that incision low. And it's really nice. Even when you're in a little negligee at home, you know, you want to have a special time with your husband, making love, you want to feel sexy. You want to hide that little scar with a little slinky thing, it's got to be low. Now, on the other hand, if you're never going to be in a one uh, or a, um, a two-piece or a bikini, and you always are going to be in a one-piece, then you probably need to make that scar just a little higher on the flank size or over the hips, because they always ride a little bit higher. So it's really important during your consult to okay. really get it down what they're going to wear down the line. But ultimately, the incision has to be low, particularly in the midline. For tummy you know? tuck. Yeah, for the tummy tuck. And number two is that that belly button needs to look like a belly button. And we've all seen out there that you can have those big, round, oval incisions around that belly button. That doesn't look nice so at all. So that's in the hands of the surgeon. It's in the hands of the surgeon. And that's the focal point. And that's the tell, tell all, hey, I've had a tummy tuck. 
you make that bell button beautiful, nobody knows. Well, now done. she looks like a million bucks. She does That's look definitely like a million bucks. Uh, and a I, two like, piece. I love this oblique view because it really shows the definition of the abdomen, shows the belly button, which is really nice and normal, and she's got a nice size, harmonious size to her breast that go with the rest of her body. She's ecstatic. She loves it. Now we're going to take a quick break. We come back. I know you have a bunch of these uh, photos. In fact, it looks like you've arranged the most dramatic are coming up. So a quick break. You're watching The Wellness Hour, leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. We're discussing mommy makeovers with the two hot hottest plastic surgeons in San Francisco. We'll be right back. Tried all sorts of cover-ups for bad breath? Try the science of Breathorex. Only Breathorex has Zytex. It attacks the cause of bad breath, keeps working for hours. It's clinically proven for real fresh breath. Get non-prescription Breathorex from your dental hygienist and now at fine stores everywhere. Designs for Health is the nutritional supplement brand of choice, exclusively recommended by healthcare professionals. As a physician, I insist on the science-first approach of Designs for Health. They have synergistic formulations with optimum quantities of therapeutic nutrients. Designs for Health, the leader in professional brand nutritional supplements. There's a new secret to looking younger. An advancement so profound, it took a team of scientists years to create. A time machine called Zoom. Getting Zoomed is the fastest way to erase years from your looks. Zoom is the most advanced teeth whitening ever. Only your dentist has it. Nothing works like it. Zoom gel gently penetrates the submicron pores of tooth enamel. The patented Zoom light super activates the gel through a unique photofenton reaction breaking down the stain's double bonds. In just 45 minutes, years of discoloration disappear, transforming your smile to wow. To find a Zoom dentist near you, go to zoomnow.com or call 800-891-4895. For your whitest, most confident, most irresistible smile, get Zoomed today. Make your appointment at zoomnow.com or call 800-891-4895 today and discover the wow of Zoom. You're watching The Wellness Hour, leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, mommy makeovers. With us, we have experts on the topic. In fact, San Francisco's busiest surgeons. We're here with uh, Dr. Poulos and Dr. Vistendahl. Okay, so more photos. Mommy makeover. Interesting. Absolutely. You know, every mommy makeover that we see is not necessarily like the last case that we discussed. Which you mean younger patients? 25 years old, younger patient. Here's a lady who came to me, actually, for filler injections, believe it or not. Okay. And while she was there, she said... Doc, is there anything you could do about stretch marks? You know, I had my kids uh, 20 years ago, and my abdomen has never come back. She's got a lot of stretch marks between the belly button and the pubic area. She's got laxity of skin. She's got excess fat, not only in the abdomen, but in the hips and in the thighs. The breasts have become somewhat droopy over time. And to really get a good result, to make a change for this lady, we really needed to address all of those things. Mommy makeover, even though this is an So older tummy mom. tuck, liposuction, and breast, breast lift. lift. Correct. Okay. In one operation. And this is about a 50-year-old? Correct. Okay. So All right. Here's this patient's post-op oh results. Goodness. Looks as if she's lost uh, 25 pounds when she hasn't actually lost a pound. Her body looks 25 years younger right. as well. And she feels 25 years younger. Now, her yeah. now, this was a dramatic breast lift, and I can't show these incisions, but, 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 but frankly, I mean, these are almost invisible. Incisions are the major trade-off for this surgery. One of the things that we always talk about with the patient, what's the main focus of your operation going to be? With lifting procedures, what we call excisional surgeries, where we're actually taking skin out to recontour the body, there's always going to be incisions, so there's going to be a scar. But these breasts almost have zero incision. Yeah. I mean, you but can't with see time, it. Those, those scars really are almost invisible in some patients. Right? So that's fantastic. What does she say when this is done? Because this is a yeah. huge, I mean, this is yeah. truly an extreme makeover. Absolutely. What do they say? She, she says, I feel like a different person. I feel like myself 20 years ago. Is and, that and right? And that's a very gratifying thing. That's why it's so much fun right. for us and what we enjoy. Which brings us to the next case, which is very similar. This lady came to me and, and she said, listen, I, I'm not afraid of who I am, but I'm not feeling very good about myself when I'm with my husband. And, and when we're together, I either like to be in the dark or I'm wearing something. I just cannot be naked anymore. And it, it's really disturbing to me, and it's been all these years, okay. and we still love each other, and really, what can you do for me? 
And you know, she so comes you see in this, here. You think, hey, mommy, makeup. Oh, this was great. I mean, it's okay. perfect because you see this person, you take a look at her body, you know what you can really change, and you know you can make her happy. And here she comes in, and she's got tautic or saggy breast, you know, and she's lost a lot of that upper um, quadrant volume, which everybody likes to have. Number two is, you know, she's lost a lot of that texture to her skin. And look at the side view. I mean, and look down at the pubis area, but down by, uh, down by the thighs. So it's a big hangover. Hang it's a big hangover, and you can see that big crease in the thigh area. That doesn't look young or healthy. And you can see that on younger women, they don't have a crease here at all. And that's really what you want to try to create. You want to tuck that all in. So if you now look at the post-op pictures, which is always fun to show, oh obviously goodness. she's got these beautiful perky breasts. They're natural. They've been lifted. Incredible. The incisions heal in beautifully. This is about three months out there, a little bit red, but I tell you, these are going to fade up beautifully. Look at the crease down here in her thigh. It's gone. It's gone. So what and do you the do? You cut it out? I mean, well, in a way? Uh, absolutely. That's what you do. You cut it out. And what's so important is that the way that you create your incision and, and really the preoperative markings are so important because you have to have a little upward traction when you make those marks so you can get that nice result down here in the groin area. Okay, okay. It's a you, little you, trick you know, of the trade. Our show airs nationwide in Canada and I meet a lot of plastic surgeons and I got to tell you, you know, when I heard, hey, you got the mommy makeover guys coming in. These are the best of the best. You know, I'm always skeptical, but, but frankly, and I'm not trying to endorse you guys, but truly, this is the best I've seen when it comes to uh, you know, breast, tummy tuck, you. lipo, really good. Very, very nice results. So, and, and you work together as a team, which is also, I guess, I mean, uh, that's, it's not just that's the two of us, it's all the people in our office. We have mm -hmm. a team of six of the most wonderful people that we work with every day, and the patients comment on it day after day after day. I feel like I'm coming to a place that I'm familiar with. I'm happy. Everybody treats me in a way that, that I've always enjoyed. So, one more. You have one more okay. photo for us. And finally, I think we're showing the prototypical patient that we see in the mommy makeover who's had loss of breast volume drooping of the breast, laxity of the abdominal skin. Now afterwards, back to the 20-year-old. Uh, She's going to be wearing yeah. those low right jeans now and showing a little bit of that lower torso just because she has this result. And the confidence right. goes up. She looks good. She feels right. like a million bucks. Right. Final message, somebody, and we are out of time, but final message, somebody that they don't like their body after pregnancy. What do you say to them? What's their first step? Their first step is to come in and get the information and to select a surgeon that this is what they do, that that's what they focus on, and it's going to get them the quality of the result that they want to get that's going to make the change in their life that they're looking for. Because in the end, it's all about results. It's hope. I tell you, I mean, so many women out there are feeling that there's nothing they can do. Uh, or they're thinking that they need three, four procedures. Well, now you have a chance where you can do one procedure and get it all done and feel great and have a fantastic result. I mean, it's so exciting for us. It should be exciting for them. Because and downtime, I mean... Uh... Normally, in the perfect scenario, somebody comes in for tummy tuck, breast, lipo. Normally, we're looking at two-week downtime. Okay. okay. Okay, good. All right. I want Absolutely. to thank both of you for coming in. Very well, interesting. All coming. of these photos are on your uh, website? On our website, www.psspecialist.com. All right. Yeah, yeah, thank, well, thank you so much for you. having us. That's great. Sure. You've been watching the Wellness Hour, leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. If you would like to see this again online or tell a friend about it, you can visit our website at wellnesshour.com and just punch in Mommy Makeover or the doctor's names. For now, I wish you good health. Thanks for watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez, the authority on health issues.